Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today's second video um, which is on this fascinating looking puzzle from uh, Josias Everett who just wrote to us out of the blue um, a couple of months ago actually and uh, I'm calling this puzzle Golden Arrows. Josiah's original artwork was very nice, very neat. I'll probably use it on the thumbnail actually um, but I couldn't make the cages golden outlined or the arrows golden so um, they'll stay there on the thumbnail. Now what have we got going on here? We have got um, some areas that look like killer cages but you'll recognize from the numbers too that they are not and some arrows that look like little killer arrows but you'll recognize from the tiny numbers that they are not. Um, what they're doing is looking at the count of digits rather than the sum of digits. So that means that this one, for instance, is saying that there are three different digits along this diagonal. This one means there's only one different digit along its diagonal. These twos mean there are only two different digits in each of the cages. The green area is a magic square. And other than that, this is an irregular Sudoku, so it's not three by three cages, uh, boxes, apart from this one, I guess, which is, um, but different shapes, which are always quite fun to do. And this is a real interesting twist on, well, on everything, on killer, little killer, um, and, and classic, I guess. So normal Sudoku rules apply, apart from that the regions are not three by three boxes, they're different shapes, as we can see. Uh, do have a go on the link below the grid. Um, sorry, on the link below the puzzle. And uh, here comes my solve, so let's get cracking. Um, well, the magic square is often the place to start. We know that a three by three magic square has to have a five in the middle. Now, the fact that all the rows and columns have to add up for to 15 and the diagonals in these magic squares means that the squares that are orthogonally connected to the five end up being odd and the ones in the corners are the even ones. So we've got a one up here so these two aren't one and nine which make up the 15 row or column they must be sitting laterally there and it must be three and seven vertically up here. Now that doesn't help us know about two, four, six and eight, but that two is saying that two is not in those cells. So it's over here and eight must be opposite it on the diagonal to make up the 15 total. So eight's in one of those two, but I don't think we can narrow this down anymore. Now what is really interesting about these both actually the killer and the little killer style clues is that they are very limiting. I know, for instance, that these, well, all of them are at the absolute minimum they could be for their respective areas. So obviously in this cage, which only has two digits, this one has to be different from those two. They each have to be different from that one, which therefore has to be the two again. And these four have to be the same now. Um, I hope you can see that. I mean, it's very obvious to me. I think it will be. And this is sort of the area, an area where I maybe lack in explanation a, bit, a little. Because that two has to be different to that cell, for instance. That, has to, that is not a two and has to be different from this, which is only one of two digits in the cage. So again, that has to be a two. This has to be the unknown X that goes in there. Now, what do we know about that X? Well, it can't be, it can't be any cell, any number, any given number that any of these cells can see because it would clash. So I think they can see all of one, two, seven, and nine. Actually, this one in its, in its region can see eight. So they can only be three, four, or six. One, two, seven, five, eight, nine are all impossible. They must come from three, four, and six. Um, the same relation applies to this cage, but it probably doesn't involve a two. Those can all be the same digit, and those must, well, they must, and those must be the same digit, but I don't think we know what it is this time. Again, however, 
we do know that it would clash with 1, 2, 7, 8, and 9, either in a region, a row, a column. So they must come from 3, 4, 5, and 6. But I can't rule out 5 this time, I don't think, for those cells. So um, we're getting something done. Now, in some ways, actually, this 1 is the most interesting arrow. You wouldn't believe that this diagonal could only have one digit. But it does look like, well, it has to, that these seven cells that I've just highlighted are in seven separate cages. Uh, regions, not cages, regions. So they are all the same. Um, and they've therefore got to all be four, six, or eight. So let's fill that in. Um, do we know more? Uh, not immediately. I tell you what we do know about them though. That is, these seven cells are, are occupying positions in all of rows three to nine and columns three to nine. So the other two of whatever this digit is in the grid have to be locked into these four cells. Ah, yes, and they can't be there and there because they would be in the same region. So it must be there and there. This is eights. Okay, that is... That's a lovely piece of working it out. And that's going to sort out our whole magic square, which is a shame because I had just noticed something very interesting about the ones, which I might not need now. Actually, I do need it now because until I sort it out... No, I don't. But anyway, I will show you this because it's another good way to break into this magic square is what if this was a one? And the problem with that is it is seeing that cell, that cell, and that cell in this shape, in this region here, that the one is looking down the whole spine of. So if that was a one, there'd be nowhere to put a one in this peculiar shape. So that isn't a one, it's a nine, but I think we could have worked that out from the fact that it's next to a two, it can't be a one. So anyway, we can finish the magic square now. However you did that. Um, making sure every row, column, and diagonal adds up to 15, and I think it has to be like that. So that's a good start. Now, three is looking at one of these cells. They all have to be the same. So let's get rid of three. Um, four isn't, six is as well. Six is looking at that one. So, we now know they're all fours. Wow, we just get to place tons of digits all in a go. Um, six and nine to complete the column. What about this shape now? Four, two, eight, three, five, one. Yes, nine is ruled out of those two. So, in fact, that is a nine. And we have a six, seven pair here. Now, this cage... Four is clearly no longer possible because of all these fours. Um, three, five, or six. Oh, well, six has got to be in one of these cells. Oh, no, be careful. This is quite a long way away. That, if six was there then we couldn't have a 6 in either of those cells and neither of the digits in here could be 6. But if 6 was here, 6 could then still sit in those cells. So I don't think we can quite rule that out. Right, let's do something else. So regular Sudoku, 294, 687 up there. These are 1, 3 and 5 as a triple. Ah, and this is on the diagonal here where there are three different digits only. So two has to be somewhere up here because we're getting those three different digits all in this box, which I can call a box since it's box shaped. Um, yeah, so that we know that these digits don't contain eight or seven. So none of these can be eight or seven either but they couldn't have been eight anyway. 
Oh, mind you, if they can't be seven, that's quite useful because the seven in this shape now can't be on the bottom row. So it's going to be in one of those two cells, which means it can't be there. And it's going to be in one of those cells for that region. And that peters out there. Ah, what about this shape? One, four, two, and eight. Look, six can't appear in those cells in this shape. So it must be in one of these cells. So there must be a six in this region. And yeah, we were just worked out that that means, yes, yeah, six must be in one of those two cells, therefore. And this now can't be a six. That's a seven. This is six. Now we know these cannot be six. They all have to be the same. And therefore, these ones are six. It's a funny puzzle, isn't it? I mean, there's so many different, different types of deduction from anything we've seen before. Now, these all have to be the same. They're either three or five. We don't know which one yet, but this one at the top is taking the position for three or five in this strange sort of F shape here. And therefore, where, whether it's three or five, where does the last one go in column five? Has to be up at the top here. So that's another of the ones in this type of um, digit. So where does the one in, oh yeah, well the other, the one in row two now has to be here because of this one, three, five triple. Those other two cells can't be three or five. So all of these six cells are the same digit. What can we tell about where they are down here? Look, one of those three or fives, yes. And the other two have to be in this little two by three box in the bottom corner because they have to be in column eight or nine and in rows seven, eight or nine. Oh yeah, and they have to be two in that box. So only one can be in the region that's in the bottom right here. So one must be there. It must go with that one and this cell. And those are all, obviously, the one that we've highlighted in column six tells us they're now all fives. So at one stroke, I can fill in the puzzles fives. All done. That's lovely. That's a lovely bit of logic to explain. I mean, you're working on a hypothetical digit for the whole grid and then filling it in in one bound. That is fun. Now, right, this shape is very full. We've only got a one and a three to put in. So they are going in there somehow. Six, five, seven, nine, and three in this shape still to go. Um, this one can't be a seven. Eight, six, five, four. This can't be two. Two in this shape is limited to one of those two cells by these various twos looking at it. Um, yeah, now it's an interesting irregular Sudoku mainly. Oh, we've still got, yes, we've still got this three clue. Ah, which has now got a one or three in the possibilities. And we've got this two clue, which I haven't really looked at. Okay, what that means is that of the, those two digits have to be different because they're in the same shape, but one of them has to be the same as that one. So one of these is a two. Um, so we're getting these positions for twos all over the place without being able to quite complete them. We don't know that this diag the long diagonal has another two on it. It could well do, but I can't be sure. Right, let's have a look at these rows. This one needs one, three, or seven to complete. Maybe let's have a look at grid geometry. Yes, this, these three are sticking out from below an imaginary line dividing the top row from the rest of the grid. That means that if they're sticking out from it, they also have to stick into it. So those three have to be the same as these three, and nine must be one of those two. Um, six, five, four, seven, eight, two could be though. So that's not clearing that up. Uh, maybe there's more grid geometry. Yes, there's a very, 
Oh, we've already done that. The line that would separate column one to four from the rest of the grid has got six, five on one side, five, six on the other. That's fine. Those two, oh no, those five are sticking down below row four. Four to eight, and they're sticking up in these cells. Have to be the same. Four to, I can't see the highlighting because of the yellow background. Four to eight, one, three or seven, three, seven or nine. Four to seven, eight. Ah, oh, that could be anything. Okay, we've got one and three to complete the row in some order there. Six, five, eight, seven, two. I don't think I'm playing this geometry card very well. Simon's very good at using grid geometry on irregular Sudokus, and clearly it's something I have not mastered. Um, those three have to be the same as those. We knew that anyway. That and those two have to be the same as these three. Is that helpful? Not really. <laughs> Okay, maybe I need to do something. Okay, fours in this shape are done. So we've done the fours there. Um, that doesn't seem to help particularly at all. Eight, three, four, five. Sorry, I'm not looking at this very cleverly at all. Right, these can't be two. Yes, we've already got four, two, eight, and five in this region. So one of these two is a three. These are from 1679. Two must be on the outside, which isn't quite what I need. Oh, let's have a look at sixes. Sixes. Oh, we've got quite a lot to highlight. Where's the six in row two? Not in this shape or in this one or in that one. Ah, it's in one of those two cells. And after that, we've got six there and six there. Where are the sixes in rows seven and eight? One of them is here, because this shape still needs one. And the other one is in this shape. Oh, look, six and six are ruling out all of those cells. So we can fill in that six. Get rid of that pencil mark, six. Okay. Now, what about another digit, fours, which are filling up all the five central rows and columns of the grid. Where are the two fours at the top of the grid? One is in there. The other is in one of those two cells. I'm gonna mark those, they're quite useful looking. Now the two at the bottom, we've done that shape, we've got one uh, in somewhere there, which is again an annoying shape. Oh, and one in somewhere here. So I mean, all of these areas for fours aren't actually very limited in the corners. That's irritating. Um, eight, five, six, nine, five, four, two, eight, six, four, two, six, eight, five, one, nine. That's three or seven. I've got one, three, seven. So these are from one, seven, and nine. Ah, and one of them's on the diagonal. Oh, it can't be seven, right? Because seven is not on these three cells, which are the three in the count of this diagonal. So one or nine is on the diagonal, which could be one there or nine there. Um, what else? Eight, one, nine, six, five, eight, seven, two, six. Ah, yes, these five cells have to be the same as these five. That's another geometry thing. Ah, so they have to include seven and two. So seven has to be in one of them. Two has to be in one of them. And whatever this is, what is this? It's not seven, eight, one, three, or five, or six or two. So it's four or nine, and that has to also be up here. If it was a nine, it would be here. If it was a four, it would be here. That means, what, that one and three are in these cells, along with four or nine. I really don't think I'm playing this puzzle well at the moment. 
Um, Six, five. I thought that looked more useful than it proved. Right, eight, four or nine, and that have to be in these cells. So what can that be? Seven, eight, one, three, five, nine. Could be two, four, or six. So they have to be these two cells. Four or nine and two, four, or six. Well, I can't get much out of that. Okay, let's have another look at twos, just in case I'm missing something. We need two twos. Yes, we've got these highlighted as possible twos in row eight and nine. Now there's a two in row three somewhere there. One on the diagonal in row one or two there. The other two in this shape could be there and in this first shape I think we've got all those as possible. Actually, that one's not possible. Oh, that's quite interesting, yes. Well, I think so. We must have a two in one of those cells, and we must have a two in one of those cells. Only one of them can be in this shape, so actually those two cells can't be twos, which doesn't completely help. One of them's got to be one or three. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, so two is in one of those two cells. I mean, that must be right. But I would dearly like to know which one. So it could be there and there. Then we have two there, two there, and two there. That's one layout of the twos. Uh, I'm just going to color those. Ray. The other layout of the twos is two there and there, two up here, that puts two there. Ah, and this doesn't work because two then has to go there. Wow, okay, that was complicated. So the greys are right, those are the twos. Okay, well at least that's figured that one out. So I'll put them in as two, delete the colour because that was annoying. Uh, having to do that was annoying. That's all the twos filled suddenly. This can't be a two. Um, ah, six now has to be here. That's useful. So this is a nine four pair. Yeah, that can still be one. Six two five one eight. Um, Mm, come on, what have I learned? This must be very helpful. Why am I not seeing immediately how? Right, six in those two. That has to be a six. That's not six anymore. Three, seven, and four to go in. That is four or nine, same as that. Same as, oh, one of the, oh, seven has been now limited to this one cell. Okay, that is good. Now we get a one, nine pair and therefore a three, seven pair in that bot, in that region. One, four, and three still to put in. Ah, oh, that could be any of them on the diagonal. Two, eight, one, five, nine, six, three or four. It can't be a seven, because that can't be on the diagonal. Um, oh, I'm still missing something. It's a clever puzzle, this. This is one or three, it can't be a nine. So the only nine in row three has to be there. So we get rid of those nines. That gives me a three, seven pair in row six. So I can fill in one and three. That is not a three. That is not a three. Nine to complete the row. That fixes the four on the diagonal, which I kind of had thought would be a nine. So, oh, that doesn't necessarily make this a four because it could still be three. What about this one? Six, five, seven, two, eight. Can't be a nine now. Oh, I could still be one, three, or four. I'm really not approaching this puzzle in the right way. Um, one, five, two, six, eight, four, six, eight. Is this a naked single now? No, three or seven, but at least that's a pair in the row, so I can put four in there now. Four is on the diagonal, that didn't help with that. Um, that's a four, that's the last one in its row. Okay, that would have helped earlier. 
one nine in its column I mean one nine and three still to go in down here um, eight two five six nine which one of these is a seven I still don't know Ah, oh, still not done. Is there some clue I'm not using? 4, 2, and this is 1 or 3. Oh, and that is 1 or 3. So they both have to be 1, surely. Yes, we can't have a 9 on the diagonal. That's fine. Uh, so that is now 1. 1, 2, and 4 are the three digits referred to on that diagonal clue. So that's a 3. And we can finish the column with a 4. 1 and 7 to fill in up here, and I still don't know the order, but it, that 3 is being given every which way. Um, 3, 7, and 9 here. Uh, still don't know. Probably I do. I'm probably just missing some very clear indication of which is which. What am I missing? There's Four possibilities there. Four, eight. These are from three, seven, and nine. How are these resolving each themselves? Oh, that one. That's what's doing it all. Was that right? Yes, it was. It was on the diagonal. Yes. Okay. Well, that's finished everything, I would think. Seven, three, three. Wow, that took some finding. I mean, I've really footled around there like a fool but uh, at least we've got to the end and that is a nice puzzle thank you very much to Josias for sending it in sorry it took a while for us to get around to it but that's nice um, I like the visuals I like the way the logical work together I've really enjoyed that so thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic bye for now